Yeah, true. I, I agree with that. But uh, yeah, like I said, we we had the tree of knowledge, uh, the knowledge of good and evil. Because because Adam and Eve ate from that, we now have that knowledge. We know murder is bad. We know, mm -hmm. we know. Um, I don't know. Uh, paying zakat for you guys is good. That knowledge we have, charity, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why are you even wasting your time, man? When I when I was when I was a disbeliever, you wouldn't find me here on a on a, on a what is it Friday night? I forget what day it is. <laughs> uh, you know, Friday night. At, Stop, in, Friday. In the what, what are you doing on a Friday night as a as a non-believer? I mean, you're wasting your jahiliya, man. <laughs> Patricius. Patricius. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, um, so I basically have a question about how um, Adam and Eve in Islam, because you guys believe that this life is a test, right? Yes. Yes. So why did God also create Adam and Eve in paradise? Why didn't he put us here right away? Are you a Christian? Uh, yes, I am. And you're asking us what? Yeah, so so in Christianity, we are here because Adam and Eve sinned. They right. chose to live their lives separate from God. So they So they weren't so they weren't meant to live here. No. So they weren't there was no, they, so you're saying human beings were not meant to come to the earth. No, they weren't. We okay. we were supposed to be in Jannah for you guys, paradise. Okay. Now we are here. Because yes, they that's, eat that's from the truth. That's a disconnect. Because we don't believe that. We believe yeah. that they were created for this world. World. Yeah. Okay. So why is the story of Adam and Eve there as well? What? Why were they first in Jannah? Regarding where they were created, there's different opinions it's, it's, on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I think the point is that, that Adam was created for the earth. That's the difference in, in Christianity. And, yeah. And created with free will. And, and when, he was not when, sent here as a punishment. He was not sent to earth as a punishment. It was the reason to be here. Okay. Yeah, we have to, um, you're looking at it from a Christian lens where, you know, you have to kind of, you know, work and sweat and uh, the woman will go through labor and all that other stuff. That's not the Islamic position. All right. Yeah, okay. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Mulk, um, which is chapter 67 of the Quran, you can look at uh, verse 2 in specific. Um, he says, uh, So he says that he created uh, death and life in order to test which of you is best in deeds. So the progeny on how that came to be was Adam and Eve because we're all sons uh, you know, of Adam, right? From a from a mm -hmm. progeny standpoint, but remember, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, from our viewpoint, doesn't do things without purpose. So the purpose was to test us uh, with life and death on with good deeds, piety, and likewise uh, submission to Him. Subhanahu wa Taala. So it's, we have two different viewpoints entirely. Yeah. Okay. But they eat from the you have the tree in Jannah and you have the tree in hell in Islam, yes? The tree of Zukum. It, yes, it's but called. our, yes, our so. trees, like for example, the one that you have, the, which was guarded by the, 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 the fiery sword and Eve. stuff, we don't, our, that's not our position. The position that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and that he instructed Adam was, you can kind of, I'm going to paraphrase here, but it's similar to saying, you know what, don't go to um, that tree over there. It doesn't matter which one he selected. It was the concept to show you that Adam was given a gift of free will and that he had the power of choice. And then this is an example for us that the choices that we make, just like if you, I don't know if you have any kids or not. But, no, I'm you know, 18. Oh, okay. Well, good thing you're not 14. <laughs> so <laughs> if you, um, if you, you know, when somebody tells you, hey, don't do that or don't go over there, naturally you're going to start building a curiosity as to why, yeah, yeah. why, and why, and so on. That's true. And then eventually you may cross that line. 
So the time frame that it took to actually cross that line, we don't have because that's not important. What is important is that the line was crossed and then repentance was sought after that line was crossed and that Adam did not blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his actions, but rather he took it upon himself and it was, it was his own actions that got him in trouble. So there's a couple, act, a couple things to learn that, from there. The first is we should never blame God for our condition. We should always be thankful. The yeah, second true. is he has the free will component, right? The third is the repentance. And you also have fourth, which is purpose to seek forgiveness, right? There's many lessons that can be learned just from that. Yeah, true. I, I agree with that. But uh, yeah, like I said, we, we had the tree of knowledge, uh, the knowledge of good and evil because because adam and eve ate from that we now have that knowledge we know murder is bad we know mm -hmm. we know um i don't know uh, paying the card for you guys is good that knowledge we have charity yeah mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so that tree was the specific tree which was ordered to not eat from we have also mm -hmm. tree of life which mm -hmm. adam could eat from mm -hmm. so, so mm -hmm. that's the kind of the point i'm making yeah, but, we don't really okay. have like I, a tree I, I, of I understand. Knowledge. I understand the Islamic perspective on it. I right. I I think you might have an idea of it, but I just to kind of help you out further, we don't have like a tree of knowledge. All knowledge is with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? So, um, yeah. He taught us the meaning of things, uh, and um, when you say that you know they ate to gain something, right? We don't have that type of a a viewpoint in islam anything that 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 we yeah, gain it's it's uh -huh. because they they wanted they were persuaded by satan to to have that knowledge he said if you get this knowledge you you'll be as strong as god or as mm -hmm. powerful in that sense so so mm -hmm. that's how um satan persuaded eve at first and then eve persuaded Patricius, why are you a christian man yeah you don't really believe it, do you? Why do you, why do you assume that? You don't really believe Jesus was God and died for your sins and all this business, do you? I do. Why? Why? Because I believe the Bible is um, true testimony. Like, like you said, it's why? not written. Why? <laughs> you know, why? I, uh, I, I look you know I, i'm not i'm not a scholar all right I, i'm uh i want to go study theology when i when i finish my uh i don't know middle school i am i'm in right now i want to go study all th all these things to actually know because i don't know now i'm looking at internet i'm looking at so why, certain so why debates, do you believe, so why do you believe it's a reliable source of information yeah because i believe it's, it is the true testimony over or why? The biography. true testimony of who of Jesus by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, but do you believe Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were eyewitnesses to Jesus and walked with him and ate with him and witnessed his miracles and heard his parables and heard his explanations to his parables? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, I mean, and if they didn't? If they didn't, I, I wouldn't be a Christian, no. But but really? like I said, I want to go... You wouldn't side. be a Christian? No. Okay, uh, well, they, no they didn't. Would fall apart. Well, they didn't. Oh, you make that claim now, you know, but this oh, let me is make a, the claim. A big. Let me make the claim. Who's Mark? Yeah. Who's, who's Mark? Yeah. Uh, Mark is. Um, I don't know if you know his father, but. Beep. What do you mean by that? We're trying to. Uh, he's trying to show you that you're giving credibility Mark? to people. Who, who is you, Mark? Yeah, Mark was his first name, and then uh, I don't know who his father was, but people were named uh, son of this or the place they were. Oh, okay. They were do you called. believe Mark was a disciple of Jesus? Yes, I do. Was there a disciple of Jesus called Mark? Uh, is this All right, ready? I'll, I'll I'll do it again for you because you may not have been around earlier. You ready? Mm hmm. What was the names of the 12 disciples of Jesus? I'm not that knowledgeable. 
I'll tell no, no, you no. that much. I know. I'm, I'm asking Google. P- Peter James. Peter James. Uh, John. Two Johns. Judas, of course. We have uh, Jude. We have. I'll tell you the names. Listen, listen out very carefully for Mark. Already. Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Nathaniel, or, that, or Bartholomew or Nathaniel, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas the Greater, and Judas Iscariot. Did you hear the name Mark? No, but he, he was a later so, d- disciple, right? Uh, so also, no dis- Mar- Mark was uh, di- uh, dictated by Peter to Mark. For Mark, Mark was dictated down. by Peter. Yeah. So you're saying that the Gospel of Mark is really the Gospel of Peter? Mark wrote it down. That's why it's attributed to him. So whose whose words are they? Well, if if I tell someone to write something down, whose words well, are they? You believe the Quran is Allah's word, but someone wrote them down. The Quran's like, not going to uh, help you. The Quran's not going to help you. Whose words are they? The, Mark wrote them down. I know that. So whose words are they? Yeah, well, there's words recorded in it from Jesus. So so you could say that. But I know what you're Mark getting. didn't sit with Jesus. So whose words are they? Yeah, Mark wrote them down. But Mark didn't witness what he wrote, did he? But Peter did. Mark didn't. Okay. So Mark is not a primary source uh, witness. Agreed? It is the first gospel to be written. Ah? If if historically you you even uh, look, I think people like Bart Ehrman, etc., they, they'll tell you Mark is the most historically reliable gospel, at least. Well, that doesn't make any sense. How can the most reliable gospel be the one written by the one who didn't meet Jesus? Oh, because it was uh, Mark was written in like 55 AD, I think. Compound. No, no. Okay, <laughs> it's written about 70 AD. The CE. Uh, but the point I'm saying is, how can a gospel written by a man who wasn't at the party be the most reliable? Uh, like I told you, man. I... I'm not that knowledgeable, all right? I, I want to go study theology. I want to go study... No, no, but, but it's like you said. It's like you said, if the Gospels were not eyewitness testimony of the ones writing it, then you wouldn't believe they were true. Yeah, but, okay. First of all, why would I... I don't, I'm not going to take your word for it. I, I want to study these things. Yeah, go There's study people that, that would... Yeah, you should. Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to t- take on that claim you said that the gospel of mark is the words of peter yeah so uh, let's just test that theory what's the most important part of christianity to believe as a christian yeah, romans uh, 10 9 if you believe uh, i have to translate the words in my head from my own language but um jesus is the no. son of god and he died on the cross for his sins no. Uh, the death and resurrection. Yeah, uh, that's what I thought. Okay. So did John have a resurrection experience of Jesus? Which John? Jo- John that wrote Revelation or the Gospel? The, uh, sorry, not John, sorry, Peter. Because well, you, said, you said that Peter is the, the words of Mark, that Mark is writing. So, did Peter have a resurrection experience after the crucifixion? um, Jesus walking on the water with Peter was after the resurrection, right? After the the tomb was empty, did he have an experience at the tomb? Did 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 he hear anything the next day? Did he have any experiences? I don't know that. Well, according to the Gospel of John, Peter raced to the tomb with John when Mary came to him and told them that the tomb was empty. And they got there and they seen the tomb was empty. And then they just went home because they did not yet know scripture. So we know that Mary came to them and told them that uh, Jesus is, is gone. And they raced, run to the tomb and he's not there. And then they went home. 
Yeah, but according to the Gospel of Mark, the women fled and spoke to no one. So if Peter is the source of the information as to what occurred, what happens to the resurrection? Yeah, good questions. So this questions the, the validity of, of whether Peter. Now, the next problem we've got is Matthew copies from Mark. Like mm. at least 70, I think 70 to 90 percent of his work in Matthew is copied verbatim from Mark. Now, the question we've got to ask ourselves here, why would Matthew, a man at the party, copy from a man who wasn't at the party? Yeah, good, good questions, man. Uh, I'll look into it. I'll, yeah. You know, I, so I'm a fair man. I'm, I, I don't, I don't say it, um, believe blindly. I try not to, at least. It's good. It's good. It's, look, you've been that's, honest, and that's yeah. why I, I'm, I'm bearing with you. So this is the second question. Why would a man who wasn't at the party, sorry, who was at the party, need to go ask a guy who wasn't at the party, uh, what happened at the party, mate? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. Then you got the gospel of Luke. Well. You say he copied. You say, you say Matthew copied from Mark, but yeah. Matthew was there. Thank if Matthew sure. was Please. there, why would he need to copy from somebody who wasn't there? Yeah, you pre you're presupposing that he copied. No, according to textual criticism, seventy percent of what's in Matthew and Luke are verbatim copies from Mark. Yeah, because because it's the, it's the same person of Jesus that that they're. No, but you, you look. Imagine there's a party here, Patrice. Patrick. Is, Call me Patrick. I'm, I'm Patrick. Patrick. Imagine there's a party, and, and Patrick, you go to the party, mm -hmm. and me, Hamza, I don't go to the party. Right. Yeah. And then we we write down what happened at the party. So I didn't go to the party. So I'm just writing down what I think happened at the party. What I'm hearing from people who may have gone or said they went, and I'm I'm building up my little story of what occurred at the party by second-hand information yeah and you patrick 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 come to me and ask me what happened at the party would that make any sense if you were at the party i was at the party and you were i wasn't yet you're coming to me asking me what happened at the party does that make yeah. any sense that wouldn't make sense though no. Right. So if Matthew is a disciple of Jesus and Mark isn't, how would it make any sense that a disciple of Jesus who walked with Jesus, sat with him, ate with him, heard his parables, heard the explanations to his parables, goes to a man who didn't and asks him, what did Jesus say? Where did he go? What did he do? How did he understand this parable? Would that make any sense? No, it wouldn't. But again, I think you're presupposing here that no, 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 no. I, I, went to Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not presupposing. It's fact. Yeah, text, textual criticism. I understand. Mm. I have no knowledge. So this is no, no. It's not. It's not textual criticism. It's higher criticism. So this is not tested. This is not challenging the text itself. This is challenging who wrote it, who said it, who is the author. Because mm. you got a guy here saying, "I I was at the party." but he's copying from somebody who wasn't at the party to tell everybody what happened at the party. That kind of implies he wasn't at the party either. And then you've got Luke who's writing, copying from a guy again who wasn't at the party, and Luke wasn't at the party, so that would make sense. So now we've got three guys who weren't at the party telling you what happened at the party. Are you believing them? And then you've got a fourth guy who's telling you all these wondrous things that happened at the party that nobody told the first three guys that these things happened at the party. Talking about John now. Yes. Yeah. So John's talking all, all these things, the bread of life, all these divine statements Jesus proclaims in the Gospel of John. Yeah. No one, none of the witnesses told Mark, Matthew, and Luke the same wondrous things that Jesus said. We have to wait an extra 30 years to hear these 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 bombshells. So why did it take nearly 100 years, or was it 70 years, to hear these wondrous statements of Jesus, where the first three writers didn't mention these statements? Yeah, well, the four Gospels also have all of their own roles, I believe. A what? So their own roles. 
a rogue. No, that only works if the the authors were there. If this is second-hand yeah. information, yeah, this yeah. is just gossip, mate. How do you yeah, verify no, that Jesus actually said this thing and did this thing? The, the, you know, each gospel writer has something different that Jesus says at the end. His final words are all different. What's written above the cross is all different. Well, you're you're one of the writers, Matthew, so inventing that history. Was... Just completely inventing history. Inventing fantastic events that never occurred. So he talks about the zombies raising after the crucifixion, going into all the towns and cities. Yet no one in history ever mentioned zombies raising from the graves, going into the towns and cities. No one. And none of the other gospel writers heard this story either. You know what I mean? And remember, Matthew's not witnessing this. He's hearing this from some somebody. So somebody's told him, yeah, yeah, this happened. And Matthew's like, oh, really? Okay, I'll write that down. You think this is historical? You think this is history? What's so remarkable about Jesus rising from the grave when all the, two, all the saints have risen just from the grave? What's so remarkable? How does one man rising from the grave supersede all the saints? Yeah, I don't have an answer for you, Hamza. So. Yeah, these, no, these the, are the, the, the good go, questions. Go, 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 He's you up, by the way, Patrick. He's just trying to encourage you as you're going through your journey to really think about this stuff because yeah, this yeah, is yeah. what's important, right? If you're not going to apply rhetoric or critical thinking, you're going to end up lost like most folks. And we don't want that for you, man. So we want to encourage you to take the journey, but take it properly, even from the fundamentals of there being no logical sense in the way that the doctrine of Trinity is explained or presented in any way, shape or form. It just, it doesn't make sense at all, man, to associate a partner with God, to associate a son with God. You know, you really got to check yourself to see what, what is my understanding of God, right? If you think that, yeah, well, that, that it's a little more complicated then though he doesn't mean it's false. yes it's mega complicated and it's convoluted and it's it's not supposed to be that way i don't think that god is going to um i don't think that god is going to cause this type of confusion for you you know what i mean but so, let's, just, let's just leave well, this i'm not confused by the now. trinity patrick you, you need to come back yeah when you've researched and you come to refute me yeah well uh, the the gospels what I've just said to you, yes. Because you've admitted if they're not reliable, if they're not historical, then you wouldn't believe them. A historical and reliable are two different things. But because the Gospel of John is not historical. It's not written historically. Okay. Like, historically, like said, I mean, these things occurred in history. Jesus said these words. Jesus yeah, went yeah, to places. That's true, but, but it's not um, chronologically uh yeah. Down, right. All right, I'm just going to give you a few more slaps now because, yeah, you, you've been a little bit petulant. <laughs> okay, just give you a few more slaps before you leave the door. All right, okay. Do you believe Jesus told the adulterous woman she he without sin cast the first stone? Yeah, it's it's not in the Codex Vac Vaticanus. Is you it? know the score. It's yeah, not yeah, even in the Latin Atticus. So it's not in the original. Yeah, but, but we, so but we have. Um, I I don't know. I don't know who it is, but we have a saint qu quoting it. In the late second century, that wasn't my question. Same... Did John write it? Yes, he did. Well, why is it not in his original gospel? Why is it not in the oldest manuscripts? Maybe it got lost. I don't know. But but we have a saint quoting it in the late. No, uh, no, no, it doesn't matter. Does Jesus, does John write it? Because it's not in his oldest manuscripts. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Continue continue you want more okay who's the only true god i believe the trinitarian god okay who did jesus say the only true god is oh we're talking about john 73 who did jesus say the only true god is uh, the father but now read right. john 75 yeah Wh who does jesus say the only true god is yeah the father all right how many only true gods can there be one how only one yeah okay yeah. who is the only true god according to you the trinitarian god right so what jesus is real jesus is real yeah always no no is jesus wrong when he says the father is the only true god and you're right 
Yeah, but you have to look at the context. Let, let, let's read John 7. Look at the context. Who's the only true God? What's the context of that? Who is the only true God? Yeah, but you have to read the entire entire. If you read from John seventy one to John seventy five, it doesn't help you. Let, let's read it. It doesn't help you. Well, yes, it does. Let's read it. Okay. These uh, these things Jesus spoke, and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, "Father, the hour is come. Come, glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify thee." Claiming equalness with with the Father. As, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he may give eternal life to all whom thou hast given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do, and now glorify thou me, O Father, with thyself, with the glory which I had before the world was with thee. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, who's the only true God according to Jesus? According to that, yeah, the Father. What do you want him to right. say? Is it's Jesus only the Father God or what? Is Jesus the Father? No, he's not. Right. How many only true gods can there be? There's one. Right. So how can Jesus be God if the Father is the only true God? Once again, do you want him to say that he's the only false God? No, I want you to tell me how Jesus can be God where he's not the Father. And Jesus says the Father is the only true God, and there can only be one true God. Because the Father is the only true God. He is in the Trinity, the head of the Trinity, where Jesus has eternal equalness with him. But, John but no, 71 and John, John 75 prove that. That's not what Jesus says. What do you mean? He says the Father is the only true God. Yes. Because he's not right. the only false god. So, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking English here. I mean, I know English is not your first language, but the Father is the only true God. Mm -hmm. There can only be one only true God. Jesus is not the Father. Therefore, Jesus cannot be God. But why does he claim then equalness with God in the same? He doesn't. He doesn't. Yes, he does. He Before says the, the world Father began... is greater than I, the Father is greater than all. Where do you where do you sure. see equalness being claimed? See, he, he here's exactly the problem. The here's the problems. You ignore explicit verses like this, and you no, try to go to scrabble in uh, ambiguous verses. For example, can God have a God? Can God have a God? No. Does Jesus have a God? Jesus is God. Does Jesus have a God? Just think he for yourself in the one and stop essence. regurgitating things that you've does, does Jesus have a God, yes or no? Uh, he's God incarnate in the flesh. Does he That's... have a God? Okay, no. No. Does Jesus say he has a God? Oh, uh, yes, he does, but you have to understand right. from the Trinity. So, with so all two occasions now... Two occasions now, Jesus has made explicit statements, and you think you know better. No, I don't think I know better. Does Jesus do, say he goes now to his God and our God, his Father and our Father? Does Jesus say this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So is Jesus saying he has a God? Well, I... Yeah, he does have a God, but... Oh, he, right. Can God have a God? No. So then Jesus can't be God. Second occasion, specific statement. No one's trying to trick you, man. We're trying to put, We're trying to bring the light into where you have already been tricked to be. Because what you're doing is you're infusing extra things to, in order to fit your worldview. And that's what we're trying to tell you. We're trying to tell you you are doing yourself a huge disservice by doing exactly that. We're digging you out of the hole right now. And we've got a lot of unwinding to do if you don't feel comfortable in being sincere with yourself by saying, you know what? I don't know enough and I've been taught to believe this, but I can be wrong.
And we're trying to show you how exactly it is that those teachings that you have been taught are incorrect and factually wrong. By giving you the exact uh, reference that Jesus himself said. So it's not about trusting your father, mother, church, pastor, or anything else. It's about trusting what Jesus himself said. So if you, if you consider Jesus to be a point of authority over everybody else, then you will listen to Jesus's advice. If you consider yourself or anyone else that you know to be a point of authority, then you're going to ignore Jesus's advice and you've got really no ground to stand on because your sincerity is just gone. And it's, we're trying to tell you what you're doing right now is just simply not cool to yourself. And you know what's funny, Patrick? Go, go. None of us here were born in Muslim families. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, John used to be a Christian. I don't know if Maurice used to be a Christian. I used to be an no. atheist. Atheist. You're an atheist. I was an atheist. And John was a Christian. Yeah, and I looked up Christianity. Trust me, man. I've got my MacArthur Study Bible here. I've got, dude. It just does not make sense, man. It doesn't. Not even. Not. Not a lick of it makes sense. Literally, they are just stories. They're beautifully composed, written stories, handpicked by people of authority and presented in a very, very beautiful and loving manner. But it's not the truth. It doesn't matter if it's not true. Are there lessons to be learned from the Bible, such as being kind to your neighbor and, you know, loving your brother and all that other stuff? Absolutely. Right. Is there good in there? Absolutely. But is it the truth as in like the most important factor as in you need to be believing in the only deity worthy of worship the same way that Jesus, Moses, uh, Adam, David, Solomon, you know, you're missing this whole chain, dude. So we're trying to tell you that you're not upon the truth. You're not upon the truth that Jesus proclaimed. And we're showing you evidences from your own scripture, which you consider authority to be that claim and to support what the truth is, which is the oneness of, of God and that you should only be worshiping that one true deity, nothing else, no one else, because if I were to just imagine yourself in this situation right now, if you were to be walking with Jesus, right? Do you think that he believed in a Trinity? Do you think he was like, oh yeah, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Because not even your church fathers thought that early on. No, that's and then they true. changed their decision. The Tertullian, Justin Martyr. You had multiple councils, dude. You had one in 321. I think there was another one in 367. You had 381. 325. You know, you mean? Yeah, the seven ecumenical councils, yeah. Sure. And it's pa Patrick, I think we've given you enough to think about. I could go on, I could bring up fig trees, but that will just take just take you out completely. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean I'm not I'm not a very knowledgeable guy. Like I said, I, I want to become knowledgeable for the Lord. All right, so go reflect on what's been said to you so far. I welcome you back anytime, any live stream. Patrick, show your face. You're more than welcome. Just be sincere, man. That's it. You, yeah. Knowledge is nothing without sincerity. You're going to acquire incorrect knowledge and you're going to destroy yourself. Seriously. If we're not over here trying to press you with knowledge. We're just literally asking you to be sincere with yourself. You know in your heart when you're talking to us right now, man, there's a reason why you're self-reflecting. Because what you're thinking to yourself secretly is these guys actually make sense. And again, we got no skin in the game, dude. We've got a higher power to answer to. So it's not like, you know, any one of us is getting paid in any which way. It's purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and welcoming you back to the family to being under the appropriate deen. That's it. We just want the best for you, dude. That's it. All right. Yeah, no, no, I, I truly believe that. I, I don't think you, you lot are bad guys or anything. All right. Take care, oh, yeah. then. Yeah, take care.